Becky has joined the meeting. Hello, everyone. My name is Jen Keller. I'm the Claims Manager at Keevly. I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar on the OSHA record keeping and reporting, which will be brought to us today by Angelo Garcia of Future Environmental Design. Um, the slide shows, the slides that you're going to be seeing today, I will email to everyone following the presentation. I'll also be muting the phone lines to avoid any feedback, but you'll find a chat feature where you could type your questions and it's on the toolbar on the top. Um, we'll also be opening the phone lines at the end for any questions. Also, you can email me um, any questions or comments to the website that you see. Has joined the meeting. I'm sorry, you, that you see on the screen now, which is uh, claims at keevely.com. Can everyone hear me okay? If there's any problems with hearing um, or seeing the presentation, please enter something in the chat box and I'll see it immediately. Um, so for those Kelsey who Taylor are, has joined the meeting. For those who are in our safety group, um, I just want to let you know that there's additional resources and classes class schedules that can be found in the member portal at keevlyworkcomp.com. Um, and I'm happy to report to our safety group members that the state fund rates have been reduced. Um, we're getting larger upfront discounts. And for those who aren't in the safety group, you know, now's a great time to reach out to us for a price quote. Ashley um, and now has joined the meeting. And now I would like to hand over this webinar to Angelo Garcia of Industri Industrial Heights um, I'm sorry, he's an industrial hygienist and principal of future environmental design with over 35 years in the experience and has joined the meeting today on OSHA records. Has joined the meeting. Has left the meeting. We should all be seeing Angelo's screen at this point. And Angela, are you uh, on online? Uh, hopefully everybody's been hearing me. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I think we're now starting to hear you. Okay. All right. Uh, well, like I said, this is Angelo Garcia, my company. First, you're required to post the OSHA 300A, and we'll discuss all the things that basically lead up to that. I just want to make sure I can like the whole time. What was that? Okay. All right, so this is what we're going to accomplish in this webinar. We're going to talk about the requirement to complete the forms, uh, the forms for OSHA's record keeping package, uh, what you're supposed to record on those forms. And um, so that's, uh, that's, and this is going to be a brief uh, presentation on that. All right, so many but not all employers, uh, there are some exceptions uh, to. Uh, which there's a list of these. All right, and there's this, uh, there's the OSHA list on the exempt uh, exempt uh, industries. Stephanie has left the meeting. And um, so these are the exempt industries. Sandra Recalme has joined the meeting. Okay. So everybody see that? Uh, so if you're one of these industries that are exempt, you don't have to uh, you don't have to fill out these forms. Mike the Andrews. forms we're going to be talking about is the meeting. OSHA Form 300, uh, which is a log of work-related injuries and illnesses, your OSHA Form 301, uh, which basically is your incident, incident report. report, and then your OSHA Form 300A, Has which left is a summary. Meeting. 
Can you still, everybody still hear me? Yes. Okay. Can everyone mute their lines? We're getting kind of feedback. Generic right, installations are also available. Just let us know how we can help you when we return. All right, uh, so these are the three forms that you have to fill out. Uh, recordable injuries and illness must be entered on these forms as they occur throughout the year. Uh, the OSHA 300A is the summary, which is the one that has to be posted on February 1st. And employers may use the equivalent forms in place of these forms. All right, the one that is typically replaced is the 301. Uh, most people replace it with the workman's comp form. Probably if, uh, if you're a member of Keevley Safety Group, you probably use Keevley Safety uh, Incident Report to complete the OSHA 301. Uh, but then you have to, in seven days, you have to transfer the information from the 301 to the 300. Mm-hmm. So these are, this is what, when you have to fill out and record an injury. So did the employee experience an injury or an illness? If that's yes, you move on. Is the injury and illness work-related? Again, yes, you keep moving. Is the injury and illness a new case? Yes. All right. Does the injury and illness meet the general criteria or the application to specific cases? Yes. Then you record that injury on the 301 and then the 300. So what does it mean to be work-related? A work-related injury illness that meets certain severity criteria have to be entered on the forms within seven calendar days of learning about its occurrence. All right, what is considered an injury illness? And OSHA defines an injury illness as an abnormal condition or disorder. Injuries and illnesses include cases such as cuts, fractures, sprains, skin diseases, or respiratory conditions. For OSHA record keeping purposes, an injury illness can also consist of only Robert, subjective symptoms such as aches or pains. All right, exposures that do not result in signs and symptoms are not considered injury illnesses and should therefore not be recorded on the form. As an example of this, say an employee was exposed to chlorine and does not exhibit any signs or symptoms due to the exposure, well, then the case would not be recorded on the log, even if it involved prophylactic, that is, preventative medical treatment. All right, cases that are work-related, well, these cases that are caused, contributed to, or significantly aggravated by the events or exposures in the work environment are considered work-related for OSHA record-keeping purposes. All right, work-relatedness is presumed for injuries and illnesses occurring in the workplace or in locations where the employee is located as a condition of employment. It's important to remember that if work makes any contribution to the injury illness, it is considered work-related for OSHA record-keeping purposes. All right, there are certain activities that occur in the work environment that OSHA does not consider work-related. An example of this is injuries resulting directly from eating, drinking, or prepping one's own food at the workplace and are not considered work-related. For a complete list, we would look at 1904B2, and this is the complete list. So if, a, if an employee was making his lunch and all of a sudden started choking, which ended up having to go to the hospital and end up him losing work days, uh, that would not be considered uh, reportable. All right. And for record keeping, all work related illnesses that result in death, loss of consciousness, days away from work, has joined the meeting, restricted work activity, transfer to another job or medical treatment beyond first aid must be recorded on the OSHA forms. So, this is an OSHA form 300. All right, for cases involving a fatality, you would enter a chat mark in box G. All right and note in column M whether the case involved an injury or illness. So as you can see, he fell from a ladder and he was a fatality. You would check this box and then enter in what the injury was. All right. Also remember that you must report that fatality to OSHA within eight hours of learning of its occurrence. The event can be reported by phone to the local OSHA area office or by using the OSHA 800 number, which is the 1-800-321-6742, or by using a reporting application on the OSHA's public website. 
All right, so for cases that involve one or more days away from work, you must place a check mark in column H right there and enter the number of calendar days in column K. And then note in column A what, what the injury or illness was. Oops. When counting days, be sure to count the days the employee would not have been able to work regardless of whether he or she was scheduled to work. All right, this would include weekends and holidays, so it's calendar days, not business days. All right, do not count the day of the injury, and if the day count reaches 180 calendar days, you must stop counting, excuse me, you may count, stop counting uh, subsequent days and enter 180 in column K. So you would enter 180 in here if it went past that. All right, for cases that involve restricted work activity or job transfer, you must place a check mark in column I, as you see here. All right, and enter the number of days the employee was restricted in column L. All right, you count the days in the same manner as counting days away from work, then note in column M what the injury was. All right, so column M. All right, employee is considered restricted if he or she is unable to work a full shift or is unable to perform all of the work activities he or she would be expected I to do at I've least once meeting. during a week. If a case involves both days away from work and days of restricted work activity, place a check mark in column H. All right, leave column I blank and enter the correct day count all right, in column K and column L, and then your injury in column M. All right, for cases that involve medical treatment beyond first aid, you must place a check mark on OSHA Form 300, column J, other recordable case. Then note in column M the type of injury. All right, for OSHA record keeping purposes, medical treatment is any treatment for an injury or illness except diagnostic procedures, observation and counseling, and first aid. First aid consists of 14 specific treatments, which we'll go over in a minute, and it includes items such as not prescription medication um, and uh, other things like that. So here's the list of first aid treatments that would not be cons you would not report. All right, so as you can see, you have uh, different things here, wound coverings, butterfly bandage, and sterile strips. All right, other, a little bit more aggressive treatments here, but still would not be required to be reported. Other recording criteria is you have your significant diagnosed injury or illness, so work-related cases of cancer, chronic irreversible diseases, fractured or cracked bones or teeth, or a punctured eardrum must be entered on the OSHA forms. These are considered significant injuries and illnesses. All right, the record-keeping rule also contains special criteria for recording occupational hearing loss, tuberculosis, injuries from needle sticks and sharps potentially contaminated with bloodborne pathogens, and cases involving medical removal required by other OSHA standards. For the specific requirements, refer to sections 1904-8 through 1904-11 using the links on the slide or by looking in the overview section. All right, so here, nitro stick and sharps injuries, right, work-related cases regarding this requires employers to record all nitro stick injuries. Medical removal, all right, this is, uh, this is this 19049, the employer to record cases where an employee is medically removed under the OSHA standard. Several OSHA standards have medical removal criteria, including the lead standard, the cadmium standard, and the benzene standard. All right, the case is recorded as days away or restricted work case, depending on how the employer deals with the removal. If employers voluntarily remove employees below the thresholds in the standard, the case does not need to be recorded under this paragraph. All right, so hearing loss, all right, a, uh, <clears throat> a standard threshold shift is defined in OSHA's noise standard 
as a change in hearing threshold relative to the baseline audiogram of an average of 10 decibels or more at 2,000, 3,000, or 4,000 hertz in one or both ears. Employers must record work-related hearing loss cases when an employee's hearing test shows a marked decrease in overall hearing. If an event or exposure in the work environment caused or contributed to the hearing loss or significantly aggravated a pre-existing hearing loss, the case is work-related. Right? If a physician or a licensed healthcare professional determines that the hearing loss is not work-related or has not been significantly aggravated by occupational noise exposure, employers are not required to record the case. Tuberculosis, if an employee is exposed to an active case of tuberculosis at work and then has a positive TB skin test or becomes an active case, then it must be recorded. The case does not have to be recorded if there is evidence that the case did not arise from a workplace exposure. All right, so you must fill out the injury and illness incident report for every recordable work-related injury or illness. Together with the log of the work-related injuries and illnesses and the accompanying summary, these forms help the employer and OSHA develop a picture of the extent and severity of work-related incidents. All right, within seven calendar days after you receive information that a recordable work-related injury or illness has occurred, you must fill out this form or equivalent. All right, most people don't fill out this form. Most people fill out their workman's comp, uh, whoever their insurance provider for workman's comp is, usually they have their own claims form, and most of those claims form have um, basically meet the requirements of the OSHA 301, and some of them actually have more information uh, than uh, basically would be needed under the OSHA 301. So it is perfectly acceptable to fill out your workman's comp insurance form if uh, that form uh, meets the requirements of the 301. All right, then the 300A is the summary of the work-related injuries and illnesses. All establishments covered by Part 1904 must complete the summary, even if no injuries or illness occurred during the year. All right, so even if you had nothing occur through the year, you still have to fill this form out and post it. What you do is you fill it out with all zeros. Uh, you just put zeros in all the, uh, uh, all the columns in the, you know, number of cases and total number of uh, cases, all this thing, all of these numbers, all these uh, lines in here, and you just put zero in. And that's, uh, uh, that, uh, you would put those zeros in, have the executive sign it, uh, fill in the other information that's required here, and then post it on, uh, post it where you post most of your other information, all right? So this is the right side of the form. Obviously, you have your establishment name, your industry description, your uh, standard uh, industrial classification code or North American industrial classification code, which this is the code that everybody has gone to, uh, is going to. Uh, pretty much uh, OSHA is using this almost all the time now. And you need to get the annual average number of employees and total hours worked by all employees last year. Both of these pieces of information can be get from, uh, you can get from your payroll company if you're using a payroll company. All right, also in this section of the form, a company official must certify that the entries on the summary are true, accurate, and complete. The certifying official must be the owner of the company, an officer of the corporation, the highest ranking company official at the establishment, or that person's supervisor. Uh, you must post a copy of the annual summary in each establishment in a conspicuous place or places where notices to employees are customarily posted. And again, you must post this by February 1st, all right, so February 1st, 2018, and it must be left in place or uh, posted until April 30th, 2018 for this year. You're supposed to keep these forms on file for up to five years all right. You don't send these uh, copies to OSHA unless asked to do so, and you have to provide access to these records. All right. The newest thing is that you have to electronically submit this information. This rule went into effect on January 7th, January 1st, 2017, requiring certain employers to electronically submit the injury and illness data to OSHA. 
The 26 data submission was required by December 31st, 2017, and the website no longer is accepting information from that time period. So this is the website that OSHA is, uh, excuse me, there we go. All right, so this is the injury tracking application. You do your electronic submission of injury and illness records to OSHA here. What you would do is you have to basically uh, launch the program, which you would basically fill in your uh, company information, you know, create your account. Once you create your account, you'd log in. And basically, you would start filling out, uh, you have to create your establishment. So we've created one here. As you can see, you create the establishment, and then you start, uh, you would basically add the 300A summary information. And there's, all of this comes from the 300A that you're posting. So here's your annual average number of employees, total hours worked by all employees last year, right? The number of cases, right, which match the letters, G, H, I, right? Those are the column letters. So you just match those letters up, enter that information, obviously you hit save, all right, and that would save the information. All right, did any recordable work-related injuries happen at the scene? Yes or no? If yes, the establishment has recorded work injuries. If no, it did not, obviously. All right, and then once you save that, you would go back and submit your 300A data. All right, and that 300A data must be submitted for 2017 data by July 1st, 2018. All right, to establish peak employment, right, uh, during the previous calendar year, it was 19 or fewer, regardless of establishment's industry. That's who has to report. Establishment industries is on this list, regardless of the size of the establishment. All right, the establishment had a peak employment between 20 and 249 employees during the previous calendar year, and this average industry is not on the, the, this particular list. And establishments under jurisdiction of these state plan states do not currently have to electronically submit to OSHA. All right, so if you're in one of these states, you do not have to submit to OSHA. All right, so you have the OSHA's record keeping work, record keeping webpage as a resource. All right, here's the record keeping webpage resource. All right, and then right here is the record keeping uh, information regarding whether you have to file electronically. All right, with, uh, with the page to launch. And these are the, these are the two, this is one of the lists that we were talking about. Right. So if you're in the following industries, you must submit the information. All right. And obviously uh, you want to go through this and look at it and look it up too. Okay. All right. So uh, this is the, uh, like I said, these are the record keeping web pages. This is the question and answer for search web page, local OSHA offices, and how to contact uh, OSHA for any questions. And at this point, we'll take any questions. Thank you, Angelo. I'm just gonna open up the, mute, the muted line. Every, okay, everyone's unmuted. Does anyone have any questions for Angelo today? Okay, so I could read some of the ones that came in by text. Um, Angela, can you please re-review re the uh, first aid criteria? Sure. Okay, first aid. So any of these, uh, if, uh, if this is what's considered first aid according to OSHA, so using non-prescription medication, 
tetanus immunizations, cleaning, flushing, or soaking surface wounds. All right, so if, if you're doing any of these, these are considered first aid and do not have to be recorded. All right. Also these. So eye patches, removing foreign bodies with, from eye using irrigation or cotton swab, uh, removing splinters or foreign material from areas other than the eye by irrigation, tweezers, cotton swabs, or other simple means. You know, drinking fluids for release of heat stress. None of, all of that is considered first aid. Okay, Angelo, and if a claim is considered first aid, they're not placing it on the OSHA 300A, is that correct? Or the That's 300? right. That's right. They do not they do not place it on the OSHA 300, and then obviously if you don't put it on the 300, it won't go on the 300A. Got you. Although it could be a workers' comp claim. Um, uh, different story. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I have another That's question. your department. <laughs> exactly. Another question. When in the year does the 300A have to be posted? The 300A has to be posted February 1st, 2018. And it stays posted from February 1st to April 30th. I have another question here. It says that I thought we only submit the 300A if asked to, or do we have to submit the OSHA to OSHA every year? You're not submitting the, the you're not submitting the actual 300A form. Uh, the electronic record keeping. Let me just make let me get this one up here. And this is a new regulation that came into effect just 2017, so that might be right. why a couple of people are confused. Right. It, it just went into effect here. You know, put it back here up on the screen. Uh, just went into effect January 1st. You're not submitting the actual form. What you're doing is you're electronically kind of submitting that form. You just, as I showed you with the website, you go and create your company information on the website um, and then uh, create the establishment and then fill out the forms. Now, there's a list of companies uh, that do not have to fill out the forms. Those company uh, that, that do not have to electronically submit the form, all right? Uh, basically, those companies uh, would have to basically, for example, peak employment during the previous calendar year was 19 or fewer. You do not have to electronically submit the form. In that case, you would only have to submit the form or the information, excuse me. Best way to say this is to submit the information on the form um, to OSHA if you're requested. Um, and then there's a, a, a establishment list industry on this list, regardless of the size. Um, let me see if I can get that. I was trying to get that up before, and it didn't come up. You don't? It sounds like you don't have to submit it. I mean, you could create an account, but then it says not submitting unless the company is listed. Excuse me? Is there a question? Sorry, no, I was talking to my coworker. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm trying to find the list. Uh, informer, certain high risk industries. There's another list I can't seem to find at the moment. Okay. On the high risk industries of um, where an employer with over 20 employees per establishment would be go. filing. That includes all construction? Yes. Construction is uh, is definitely on this list that would have, no matter what size employer, uh, the size of an employer, you would have to still submit your uh, information. It's considered a high-risk industry. Wait, can you please elaborate that? Because I... I'm confused now. So okay. no matter your size, if you're on the high risk, you have to report electronically, no matter how big you are. If you're five employees or 37 employees, you still have to report. Or right. if you have 19 or fewer, it doesn't matter. You don't have to report. It says, okay, so establishments with peak employment during the previous calendar year was 19 or fewer, regardless of the establishment's industry, you do not have to report. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. I have less than I have less than 19 employees, so I was just getting confused on with the whole high risk thing or not. Okay. Right. 
establishment industry is on this list, regardless of size of the establishment, you have to report. So if you're on that list, which was the list I just had up here. Even if you have less than 19 employees. Okay, now I'm really more confused. Let's see. So this list that's up are people that don't have to report. Are not required to keep OSHA injury and list records for any, uh, for any establishment classified in these following codes unless they are asked to do it, so in writing. So these are the ones that are exempt. No matter um, their size. Okay. No matter what size. Oh, okay. All right. I follow now. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions? Yes. Did I hear someone had a question? Uh, yes. I, uh, can you explain about the establishments? Yeah, Angela, can you go over the difference between the written record keeping rule where the person has to have um, 11 or more employees per company <coughs> versus the electronic reporting requirement where it's 20 or more per establishment. Can you clarify that? Um, well, the, obviously, there's a, if you're in that uh, 11 to 19 group, uh, you have to still keep the OSHA, three, you know, you still have to keep the OSHA three, uh, 300 and then post the 300A, but you don't have to electronically submit it to OSHA to submit the information. Okay, but what, when they say establishment per establishment, can you clarify, is that is that a, a separate location? Yes. Versus the yeah, company? That is, each separate location uh, is basically, each establishment is a, considered a separate location. And each, so each location must keep these records. And for our um, contractors, the requirement for a, a location, if it's a construction site, would be that that construction site has been um, in effect for over one year? Uh, that one, I, have, I would have to look up. Does anyone not, have any I, other questions? We will be providing the PDF um, after the class, and it will include the first aid criteria. I'm sorry, um, I do have a question. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, in reading the website, it said if you're in the state of New York, you don't have to submit the ITA? No, uh, the state of New York? Yeah. No, uh, establishment in these states are not currently required. It's simply state, and these are state and local government establishments only. Okay. Right. So that that wouldn't be a private business that only would apply no. to say a municipality. Local government municipality. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So what happens is New York State is um, is a is a um, a state. Um, the wording they use is a uh, has a state program, and the. Uh, the New York, it's called Public Employee Safety and Health, it's called PESH, and it only regulates safety and health uh, using the OSHA regulations on state employees, state and local government employees. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, for example, California, for example, has an, a state, uh, state uh, OSHA, and it covers everything. It covers public employees and private employees. That's the reason why California doesn't have to uh, submit it. Okay, I have a couple of that mm -hmm. separate establishments. Like, what are the requirements to make separate estab establishments for one company? Well, a separate uh, esta establishment would be a separate location altogether. So, if you have two locations, you mean a job site or a separate like the that the company has more than one location. A job site doesn't count as a location unless it's it's a long-term job site over one year. Mm -hmm. So then you would be counting your, your um, if you only have one office, but you have small job sites that are under a year, then you only have one establishment. 
Okay, and if you don't know if it's going to be over a year, like, like what's is there a fine line there? No, if it, it if you're unclear, if it doesn't fall within the first year, I would just count yourself as the one establishment. Okay, so then if you're going into the second year and that job site is still going, then you have to do a separate, you have to create right. a separate establishment. Yeah, you're maintaining the OSHA records for each establishment separately. You're not combining them. Exactly. And and a job site that's over one year would be considered its own establishment, um, and then it would have to have its own records. So that would mean its own 300, 300A, 301, um, plus if you're required to file it, file the data electronically, then it would be listed as a separate entity, a separate okay. establishment, I should say, as an establishment, I should have said. Right, so one company, if they have, say, two job sites over a year, you're actually submitting three of them totally right but the requirement is to have 20 or more employees per establishment so if you don't oh, have okay. 20 so employees under the 20 then right, it doesn't you don't count need, exactly okay that answers my question good does anyone else have any other questions i have a few few more written so does anyone have any questions they want to ask verbally Okay. Um, the question, can you please um, elaborate, can, can the Form 300 be replaced by, an elect, uh, by a claims form? Uh, not the 300, the 301. The 301. Okay. So the 301 can be replaced by the electronic first report of injury. Right. And this is a question um, that we've been asked quite a bit. I don't know if you'll have any insight on this, but for those employers who were required to file electronically last year, the first year that they're doing this, um, and they did not get their data in by 12-31-17, mm -hmm. um, do you know of any repercussions that OSHA might be uh, issuing in the future on that? <laughs> um, uh, that's a hard one. Uh, it's kind of similar to most of uh, most of the uh, record keeping and reporting violations that OSHA issues. Typically, is, uh, is you know unless it's a willful violation, you know you you willfully uh, decided to ignore this. Uh, the, the Pretty much most of them are just other than serious violations. Um, so other than serious violations, can you, you can get a violation for it, but I haven't seen OSHA issue a violation for it. Pretty much they make you fill out the information. Great. Okay, does anyone have any other questions they'd like to ask? Well, I'd like to thank everyone for their time today's webinar, and I'd like to thank Angela for going over that information. Again, we will be sending out the slides. Um, so if you have any additional questions, you're welcome to contact me, or you could contact Angela directly. On, on the screen, you'll see his email address. And uh, we hope you have all a good, good and safe week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We done, Jen? Hello? Yeah.